Hello internet. Why is it whenever you get something going wrong with the heating, it's always in the middle of winter, it's cold, it's dark, and I can't be bothered doing it. But if I don't get this fixed, I can't get my window defrosted. So at the moment, in order to start my little heater, I have to sort of give it a hit just down here. And then it starts working. There you go. You can hear it. So it works, albeit a little bit noisy. And right here, this is my little plan B, a little one of these external heaters, just so that it will defrost the window, which is obviously not ideal because it's a Honda after all, things should just work. It's the only thing that was really kind of not working when I bought the car. I know what it is, you have to actually take the whole center console out. You've also got to remove the clutch and then there's like three screws to get to the little hamster cage wheel. I don't have to do that though, because I'm very lucky that when I bought this car and I'm going to show you in a little second, there's a reason why I don't have to do that. I'm very confident it's not the heater resistor because I've replaced that as well. And the symptoms of a bad heater resistor is simply it either comes on in full or it might just be one speed or it doesn't come on at all. So I'm pretty sure it's not that because when it does work, they work as they should do. So what I believe is happening is, and the noise that you can hear is a commutator uh, and the armature, they're just basically worn right down. And that little tap that I do to get the motor going is what's actually uh, just enough to keep it going. And I think it's literally on its last legs. So enough talk, let's get it changed. So unfortunately, you're gonna be lying on your side and sometimes on your back. And trust me, having a little sheet like this and a bucket makes all the difference. So get your sheet down like that and then get something like a bucket. And just having that set up there, it means you're not kind of breaking your back and you can lie down and still get in there and it's a little bit more comfortable. That's pretty much how it's gonna be, I'm afraid. You'll see that there's a couple of screws here and here. And that's because the person before me was obviously trying to get into there and hadn't realized that you need to take all of the center console out. And he's then obviously snapped it. Now I've just put a couple of screws in to stop it falling out. You never notice it and I'm happy with that. And it works to my advantage because obviously I can take those two screws out now and I can get in there. So my little tip for you is if you can remove this panel here, where from the join upwards, you don't need to remove the whole of this centerpiece here. So unfortunately, if you haven't got a crap panel like mine, or you haven't found a way to carefully remove that upper section without having to take the center console off, then it's not gonna work for you and you will need to take the whole center console out. It's not that difficult. You need to remove the back part where the armrest is and the front part. And this is how you do that. Let me get this driver's side panel off. Okay, the screw here. So we've got to take this uh, front face underneath the steering wheel off. There's one fixing point there. Just need to remove that. Seeing as on the passenger side, that's if you're in the UK, of course. Oh, there you go, that snapped. Let's try this one. Yep. There's also a posi head on it. And there'll be one, obviously, on the other side as well, on the driver's side. this side. It's starting to lift from the back of this. There we go. It's starting to come through. There we go. Pull the handbrake up fully. Success! I'm going to remove this trim. There we go. This here. That's your fan. You need to remove this little actuator here, which is part of the vent control. And pay attention to these cogs here as well, because this has all got to go back as it is. But you can see, I'll go further. Now that I've got that panel off there, 
this is the little space that you have to work with in order to get your fan out and unfortunately you will also need to move your clutch pedal that's got to go in that direction by loosening the four bolts and moving it to the side and that's what we're trying to get to just up there so I've removed one screw there there's another one and there's one more at the top there You can see how this engages where the pink grease is. That needs to go into that slot because this rotates. So make sure you have a little look where that goes and you get it back in the right position. And then get this last one here. So once you've got this plastic part of it out of the way with the four screws, behind it you can see the metal bracket and get into that. There we go. So pay attention to which way this goes in because it has to sit in this slot here you can see where the pink is so then next thing is there's a little screw at the back it's a phillips but it's also a hex head so you need to undo that so those screws are removed now and that's the bracket it can come off it goes back on in this orientation that hole there and that one there have locate locating pins oh, and this is why having this bucket here <laughs> makes all the difference because this is the orientation that you've got to be working on to get under there. It's the only way. You're kind of on your back and on your side. So trust me, having a little bucket to sit on makes all the difference. There's a screw here you want to undo. I've just taken one out. There's one at the top you can just about see up there. And there is another one here. Incidentally, this thing here what goes into there is your resistor. There's a video below if you want to know. This is also another common cause, but the symptoms usually with a blown resistor are it either stays at one speed or it's at uh, top speed or it doesn't come on at all. Um, but my fan is actually working. It's just that I need to give it a bit of a bang. You should be able to wiggle this. There we go. And this is where, unfortunately, you can't take it out unless you get the clutch pedal out of the way but you can see that it's nearly there. It just, unfortunately, just won't come out just that little bit more. So you're gonna to have to remove the clutch pedal now. Yes, happy days. So to get the clutch pedal off, you need to undo these four 12 mil bolts. Alrighty, so with the four nuts removed, you can now wiggle this clutch out position. Just watch the cable at the back. And you don't need to remove the clutch, but you can just do this. Just slide it to the side, like so. So, moving the clutch to the side, you can just about get the fan now. Oh. Oh. So there you go. It's tight, you can do it, but it's it's not for the faint-hearted, I must admit. Listening to this, it sounds really good. I can't see and hear what I thought. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Why is my skin leaking? Um, but it sounds all right. I'm just looking inside there and actually there might be a bit of corrosion. Let's get it on the bench and have a proper look. So looking inside there, it does look to be a little bit dirty. Whether that's dust from the brushes, um, it's a bit hard to tell. You can see inside there as this commentator and the armature spins round. But the brushes aren't really accessible. It certainly sounds all right. It doesn't sound like it's rough. Spins nice. 
and in there it does look a little bit um, dirty. So maybe I'll give that a clean and see, but it looked like a good enough connection. So I managed to knock the uh, pin through and got the wheel off. You can see it's a pretty sealed unit there. I could go further, there's a little circlet pin in there, but really I think this is um, either got dirty contacts or it's had its day. Um, I'm gonna give those a good clean in there and see, but I think I just need a new one. Hey ho, it was worth having a look, at least I know now. You can't just replace the brushes, unfortunately. one at the top and there is another one here. So if you can't quite get enough room down there with the clutch pedal moved to the side and just be careful with a little pipe on top of the clutch pedal as well. You can actually just remove the whole assembly altogether. There's only a couple more bolts that you have to do and this is how you do it. So one, two, three, four. Undo those, get the clutch pedal to come down this way. Remove this little plastic cover pulls off you have to kind of work half on your side but you can get to them all right so that's all the nuts removed they're all 12 mils and we can get a little bit of wiggle room bring it down you should be able to get in the back of this a little bit easier so here we go i'll just move the little split pin here i'm going to move this pivot bolt so i'm undoing these two top nuts they're also 12 mils two screws see how that goes Aha, that's better. So this is the orientation of the bracket. Remember to get those locating pins in the right place. Now, a little, little tip here to make sure that you get the actuator on, this arm has to be in this position. And to get it in this position, all you have to do is turn the temperature right down as low as it can go. So you can see the temperature sitting at 24 there. So just turn the temperature. So now just check the orientation, make sure that everything is aligned. Right, so importantly here, you wanna make sure that this is sitting in the groove correctly. You've got the four screws on the top there, all nice and screwed in tight. The bracket is obviously secured to the body. So the important thing is now to make sure that all these gears and everything are working nicely. So simply turn the heat on. And you'll see what happens. The arm moves across and it starts to pivot on the bottom there and I can feel the warm air coming through. So what this is actually doing as I make it go cold and hot is it engages the outside air and it mixes it with the warm air coming from the engine and that's how you get your temperature. Obviously, you've got to make sure that you plug it in too. Remember to put the top plug in there. You can see the yellow and green wire makes sure that's all nice and secure in there. And as I increase the fan speed, so that's a new fan in place, and it all seems to be working very nicely. <laughs> 